EveningCon.org podcast in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the Hot Dead Out Podcast, where normal is not my specialty. I am your host, Adam Higgins, the Odd Dead Out, and this is a show where I ramble and rant and tell you about my life and my brain fuckery and maybe entertain you a little bit. I don't know. That's kind of up to you to decide. You can find me at odddadoutpodcast.com and all the places that say Odd Dad Out on them and stuff. Yeah. Way to fuck that one up. Ah, it's almost like I haven't been podcasting for seven years. What the fuck is wrong with me? Ah, <laughs> how are you? Ah, I'm doing better. You may or may not be able to tell, but I my voice has come back since the last time I talked to you. Um, I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced it was the medication I was on at the time. Because, yeah, I was raspy as fuck last time. And man... That it really sucked. Ah, man. But I'm doing better. I, I'm through all of my medication. I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm not having any lingering side effects other than I have gotten myself into the habit of drinking more water, which, let's be honest, I needed to do anyway. But like I said, I don't have to give up my coffee, so fuck anybody who tells me otherwise. Ha <laughs> ha. Everything I looked, all all the medical what's and who's it's to say, yeah, coffee really doesn't hurt your kidney stones. But I needed more fluids and all that jazz anyway, so yeah. But the one drawback, and this sucks. Okay, the drawback of having kidney stones is fucking kidney stones. But uh, I don't know if I mentioned this. I In the past, I have gone to the plasma centers and donated plasma for extra cash because hey times are tough and the world sucks right now and shit's expensive so anything to get extra money is a good idea so they just opened a plasma center around the corner from our house and I saw it one day I was like hey you know what let's start doing that again because big picture the reason why I stopped before was it was fucking far but hey, you go in, you sit there for about an hour, hour and a half ish while they hook you up to the machine and you get paid. And depending on, you know, different factors, usually kind of the, in, in some places, the rate's pretty consistent, but eh, in the one around the, by my house, eh, the rate fluctuates, like your, your per visit rate kind of fluctuates a little bit. But ultimately, by the end of the month, you're looking about between five and five fifty a month. If you go like the, you can go twice a week, and you have to have seven days. Blah blah blah. It's a whole big thing. But basically, in the course of a month, you can get anywhere from five hundred to five hundred and fifty dollars. And if you've got like you know new uh, new donor bonuses and things like that, your first month you can pull in you know six seven hundred bucks. It's a pretty good deal for what it is. I mean, ultimately it's like having a part-time job. Like I said, I pull about five, 600 bucks a month, just sitting there watching Netflix. And so it's nifty. Not that I'm like promoting this as a, you know, it, but it's some good extra cash. And with all the hospital bills and everything recently, we're like, you know what? It's, it's a good thing to be doing because you know, that's, 500 bucks we can be putting towards like hospital bills and credit card bills and shit like that that we really have and we're like yeah fine and i'm all healed up um i don't remember if i mentioned i had a really gnarly bruise on my arm from the ivs and everything when i was in the hospital and one of the things about when you're donating plasma if you're all if you've got any bruises or anything you can't donate uh it's it has something to do with like blood clot every exactly what it is but like it basically you're not allowed to donate if you've got any bruises on your arms and so and unfortunately one of the side effects of uh plasma donation you can get some you know if the person who stuck you isn't that clean i shouldn't say clean worst word to use when you're talking about a medical situation when it's not a a smooth comfortable stick if it's kind of wonky 
or you move wrong or something in, in the course of events, you can end up with a pretty ugly bruise. And they, they give you all these tricks of how to get rid of bruises because if you've got any bruises, especially in your elbow area where they're uh, putting the needle, you can't donate. Well, I waited out. I had, to, like I said, I had this big gnarly bruise on my arm from the IVs when I was in the hospital. And so I was like, well, shit, I can't donate until this is all cleared up. And I also wanted to make sure I was done with all my medication and anything in case, you know, any, there was any conflict with that, you know, because if you're on certain medications and you have certain this, 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 you can't donate. So I was like, okay, I want to make sure I'm completely clear. I've done all the stuff. All my medication is gone and my bruises are all gone. Everything's clear. Nothing should be stopping me. Except one of the questions, because you have to do like a questionnaire thing every time you go in. One of the questions, since your last donation, have you had any new medical procedures or a new medical diagnosis or anything like that? So they make me go in and talk to a little medical advisor person like, oh, okay, well, you checked yes to this. What, you know, clarification, we got to put it in your file. I was like, oh, yeah, I had a kidney stone removed. And they're like, okay, then that's okay. And then do you remember? What, like, I was like, oh, and I was on this medication, this, 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 but I haven't been on it for like three weeks. Like, oh, okay, well, we'll just put this in your file. Do you remember all your medications? Like, I remember this and this and this and this. Okay. I was like, okay. And they put it all in. And then I had uh, a stent put in with the, uh, when they did the kidney. Like, oh, oh, where was it? <laughs> I'm like, uh oh. Like, oh, it was your uh, uh, urethra. Like, oh, okay. Click, 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 click. Urethral stent. Having a urethral stent means. I am now not allowed to donate plasma for four months <laughs> from the date that it came out, which was the 17th. So now, when we really kind of could use the money, I'm stuck not being able to go and donate plasma and get that extra, you know, really easy watching shit on my phone for an hour, a couple times a week money, um, which if we're doing the math, that's almost two grand that I lose in those four months. Sucks. That's a lot of credit card bills right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It, you don't think about it when you're doing it. That, you know, it's like, oh, it's 40 bucks here, 80 bucks here, maybe 100 bucks there, depending on what the payment schedule is like. You know, and you don't realize that, yeah, you're making about five-ish a month. Because it's, oh, it's 40 bucks here. It's 80 bucks there. It's 100 bucks there. It's, you know, little things. It doesn't seem like much when you're doing it. But then you get to the end of the month and you realize, oh, shit, it's this, this is a few hundred bucks. And you realize, oh, I've been doing this for a couple of months. That's a couple thousand dollars. And it, you know, it, it adds up. And my wife actually found an article about a guy who's been donating plasma for like 20 something years or whatever like started it when he was a broke college student just to get some extra money and kept doing it for the sake of, Hey, it's for, uh, you know, it's supposed to help with different medications and things like this and, and all this stuff that they use it for in the medical industry. And he was like, yeah, and he, he kind of kept donating on principle and he said that he made about $6,500 a year. And I was like, is that right? And I started crunching numbers. I was like, okay, well, yeah, it's between five and five fifty a month. So I was like, okay, five hundred bucks a month is six thousand dollars a year. And it's a little more. It again, rates fluctuate month to month and you know, number of weeks in the month and all these different things. And so you're like, okay, I could make about six thousand dollars a year, which isn't a large amount of money, but it's definitely not something to sneeze at six grand. Who couldn't use an extra six grand? And what's it take me three hours a week? You know, shit. I cannot argue with that money. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm stuck out of the, the plasma chair until July, at least. But still, uh, and I, I'm definitely going to go back because one, it's right around the corner. It's a lot easier than the place that I used to go to was like 30 minutes away from our house. It just was not worth it, you know, 
30 minutes drive up there, sit in line for, you know, sit in the chair for like an hour, but I'm like in line waiting to get hooked up for anywhere 30, 40 minutes. And depending on how busy it is, the time of day, what day you go, all these different things. And it wasn't really in a good neighborhood to begin with. So I really didn't like going over there. I always had this feeling like I was going to get stabbed or my car was going to get messed up because it was really one of those this sits in in a bad neighborhood and a lot of the people that were going in there were homeless people that needed the cash and wait I'm not going to you know shit on anybody for doing it cuz hell I needed the cash that's why I do it but yeah it was not the cleanest place again I shouldn't say clean it was a clean facility but the neighborhood was really dodgy and I didn't like going over there but anyway it's good money for sitting there watching fucking shit on my phone. And it's actually helped me catch up on some old shows that I haven't seen in a while. And it's it's funny, but it's helping me now, right now, as we're speaking, to get into a, a change that I'm doing for recommended listening, which I'll get more into later, but a change. Um, yeah, but enough about plasma and all that, because I know the idea of, you know, getting hooked up in needles and blood and, and all that stuff. And it's, it, it makes some people squeamish along with telling all the guys at work, uh, because now that I'm back to work and explaining the process of how they remove my kidney stones and then watching every guy just cringe and yee about, you know, they, they, they go up and they, they didn't cut me open or anything. It just went up and through the, all of the, yeah, they went up from down there into my kidney. The, yeah. So everybody, ah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> One of the other guys at work actually like broke his ankle right before I went out with my kidneys and he just got back this week and everybody's been like, would you rather have the busted ankle or the kidneys? And as I'm, ex- everyone's like, I don't know. He's going to be on a bad ankle for a while. It's like your kidney stuff was over pretty fast. Right. And it's like, yeah, it's like when I came out of the operating room, my, my pain was pretty much gone. I was felt fine. But yeah, you know, that sounds good. And then I explained to them how they did everything and they're like, ah, I don't know. I think I'd rather just have a broken ankle. <laughs> I don't want anybody shoving pipes or hoses or anything up there. That's, that's, nah. So, yeah. <laughs> but what else do I got going on? Because the plasma thing was just kind of something that came up today. Because, like I said, I, I've been waiting this whole time to get back on it. Because, hey, extra money. And, <laughs> but, uh, it's been, it's been busy. As much as it's been kind of bad, we've been just kind of get back into normalcy, I guess. Um, I, you know, I'm back to work. I'm back to, you know, everything's clear with the doctors and they finally give me the fucking letters and I was able to go back to work and getting back to work and getting back in the groove of things and, you know, doing just getting, but, you know, it's, it's the springtime and work is picking up and all the things but then you know there's still people out and there's new people coming in and blah 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 you know work it's just work you know shit but I was home for like three weeks my sleep schedule was reset I suddenly am on a human work like sleep schedule I was going to bed at 10 o'clock with my wife every night we're, you know we're sitting up watching Destination Fear and, and going to bed at like 10 o'clock and in three weeks, I got used to that, especially with the medication I was on, everything making me sleepy. It was really easy for me to go to bed at a human time, like, but I work graveyards and I've spent the last two weeks trying to recalibrate my system back to what it's been for, honestly, most of my adult life. I've worked overnight shifts for most of my life, like almost all of it. And like, I think the only time I didn't was when I was like a teenager, when I was like 16, 17, I made manager like 17 and a half. And I became responsible. Like basically once I got out of high school, I was like, oh, you're not in school anymore. You can close. Okay. And I became a closing manager. And so I, 
I've just always worked late nights, overnights, you know, one, two, three a.m. That's just been my my wiring forever at this point. But you know, when you're on a bunch of medication, it makes you sleepy. It's really easy to go to sleep in human hours. What really sucked was I was waking up at six in the damn morning. And you're like, wait, don't you always wake up at six in the morning? Like, yes. But I was waking up in, at six in the morning naturally. I was having a whole night, a full night of restful sleep. Granted, you know, medicated and all that. But I had a full night of sleep and was waking up at six o'clock in the morning naturally ahead of my alarms and just getting up and being all fucking rested and shit. And yeah, <laughs> well, now. I'm back to work and I'm working until three in the morning and getting home at four, four thirty in the morning and having to wake up at six in the morning again and having to get used to rewiring and get back to those hours and getting back to my sleep schedule. But I've still got shit to do around the house and we've had a lot of shit going on. Boys have had dentist appointments and dentist appointments and dentist appointments because we had, oh, all the boys are going to the dentist for just a regular checkup. Oh, one of the boys needs filling. He's got to come back on Monday. Okay, well, fuck. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then all of the boys, or the uh, two of the boys are getting their braces fixed that same Friday after the he gets his uh, cavity done. Well, fuck. Okay. <laughs> and he's just like, and then other doctor's appointments and other things. And yeah, it, and all that, uh, taking the dog to the vet to get her shots, you know, uh, just lots of things. And, you know, it's just been lots of doing and trying to do while getting back into the habit of work and work schedules and, you know, taekwondo tournaments and, you know, just, it's just everything and getting back into the groove of everything after three weeks out of work. At least I finally have a, you know, regular paycheck. I finally had a whole fucking paycheck again. But yeah, it's, it's been crazy and doing all that while trying to figure out what the fuck was going on with my garden and fighting my just daring to explode. I seriously think one of my, uh, planters is going to explode by the end of this season. Um, but you know, it's like, okay, my green beans were a flop. Okay. Let's try and plant more green beans. I got more green beans coming in. Uh, Cucumbers were a flop. Let's try and plant them again. Come to find out where I have my cucumbers is right next to my potatoes. Apparently, cucumbers and potatoes actually don't grow very well together and they kind of rob each other of nutrients. I think I might actually just give up on the cucumbers for this season or move them next to the corn. I don't know. I might. I got to figure out what I'm going to do with them because, yeah, they're just not growing. Um, Just I'll give the potatoes the space. I don't know. But, yeah. I re I pulled all my, my rainbow corn. I'm calling the rainbow corn a bust. I, it took weeks for that stuff to grow, to come up. And out of what was 30 seeds that were planted, I got seven and they were kind of stalled out. And so I said, screw this. And I went and planted 18, uh, just yellow sweet corn, standard yellow sweet corn. It did really well for us in the past. I said, you know what? I'm just going to grow this instead. and because like I said, it took like three weeks to get seven little sprouts when we planted 30 seeds. I planted 18. This time I planted 18 holes, 18 seeds. I didn't double up on anything. And in a week, I've already got 10 sprouts like I should. I'm, I'm curious because there is one whole row of seeds that isn't coming up. And I'm wondering if it's just because it's right where the dill is. And so it's trying to grow up through the root system of the dill. I don't know. Because originally the dill was planted on top of the corn. Now the corn got planted underneath the dill. So I don't know. It might be creating a problem. But it looks like I'm at least going to have 12 corn that come up. They've only got a couple more in the second row that need to come up. I'm like I'm, I'm going to get most of it, which is much better than what I got, you know, with the rainbow stuff that I, I just gave up on. But. It's looking good. My potatoes are looking great. If nothing else, I'm going to have a fuck ton of potatoes. That's, I, I can definitely say that's working. Nothing else. <laughs> nothing else is going very well except the potatoes. 
fine. I'll just grow a fuck ton of potatoes and strawberries. We got a fuck ton of strawberries right now. I started having to go out there and like tip off and take because it was just growing so many flowers and which is going to make so many berries. But if you got a shit ton of berries, then they never get a chance to get very big because they're all kind of fighting for the same nutrients and everything. And I got probably three dozen strawberries. And I was like, no, I don't need any more berries to come up. I need the berries that are here to fully develop. So I've, I've been going out there every day, pulling off new flowers until yeah, I, I can kind of get harvest some of these berries. But yeah, been crazy. And on, on top of all that, oh yeah, it's springtime. The grass is growing really fast and I need to mow it. Except my lawnmower was not used for like six months and it's Arizona. You don't think about win- overwintering your lawn equipment because generally speaking, you, I, if I didn't have a landscaper, I would have still been using my lawnmower all winter. But we've got a guy that comes out once a month and he does do the backyard and over the winter it didn't get so big or so tall that I necessarily needed to stay on top of it between his visits. No, over the spring and the summer, absolutely. I'm going to have to make sure every week I'm mowing the yard again. But I go to start it up, not working, not working, not working. Damn it, what the hell? I throw some gas into the uh, air filter, pull it. It's like it starts and then it burns that gas. Nope. So, okay, somewhere that I'm thinking carburetor's clogged, which means I didn't have to go and disassemble the carburetor on my lawnmower to get it running and like clean it out and like i take an old piece of guitar wire a guitar string and clean out all the ports on the carburetor flush the fuel lines all this stuff run it and then go pull it like give it a couple good pumps and went and pull it and starts up runs like hadn't run this good in a couple years and and this is with a bad gas mind you because this gas has been sitting there for six months too but go run it and starts right up and mow my yard. I'm like, man, it hasn't looked this even in a year, <laughs> but I'm glad it because I'm glad that I got it fixed because that would have been like, like I said, I need to have a lawnmower, even though, you know, I got a guy who comes out. He only comes out once a month, spring and summer. I'm going to be knee high in grass. And if I don't mow it for a month, I've, I've posted up those videos on Instagram. So I need to stay on top of the grass, but, I was like, yeah, that's probably going to be two hundred to two to three hundred dollars to fix that or to replace that because at that point it's cost more to fix it than it does to replace it. But I was like, I don't need a new lawnmower. I don't need to spend money on a new lawnmower right now. I got medical bills to pay. I don't need to be buying a new lawnmower. But yeah, I fixed it. I'm super happy and I was like super excited because I was, like, I was really afraid that I wasn't going to be able to get it cleared out. And I was going to have more trouble. And I was like, oh, fuck, what am I going to do now? The damn thing won't start. And I really need to get the damn uh, yard done and maintained and all this. But now, now that suddenly, oh, there's 200 something dollars that we were going to spend on a uh, lawnmower. Well, now I could theoretically try and talk my wife into letting me get a smoker. <laughs> <laughs> because with all of the, uh, you know, it's warming up and with, you know, I've got my meat grinder and we've been, ma- I've been grinding my own hamburger, which to, I did a couple of weeks. I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I got a roast and some stuff and I ground my own hamburger. It was really good. And I'd seen a lot of people who were like, yeah, you just buy a whole brisket. You know, you get the big full sized untrimmed brisket that, you're looking at 13 to 20. When I went to buy mine, the smallest one they had was 13.75 pounds. The largest one was about 23 and a half pounds. It's, it's a lot of meat, but this is what you're looking at. But you, it's like, but you're paying like maybe 2.99 a pound, 2.50 to 2.99 a pound, depending on what you know rates at the time. Well, ground actually pre-ground hamburger right now which is of questionable cuts. You don't know where it all came from necessarily is right now you're looking at maybe three ninety nine dollars a pound. And again, questionable cuts. You don't know where it came from. Could be perfectly fine. 
could be asked me. You don't know. <laughs> but I didn't even say anything. Like the ask me to off a cow is actually a pretty decent cut, if I remember. But hell, it could be where the brisket comes from. I don't remember. Anyway, what you do buy yourself a brisket. And depending on if you really want to control your fat content, and I'm going to say right now, I should have trimmed this a little bit, but you just chunk it all up and run it through the meat grinder. And congratulations, you have the freshest, juiciest hamburger you're going to have. And damn, if it wasn't damn, we did sliders tonight. They just made a bunch of little sliders. And I will say, I don't necessarily like when I do make sliders because they shrivel up a lot. They shrink a lot because it's not much to them. You know, make a regular hamburger patty, it shrinks up pretty good, but you've got a lot of mass there that can shrink and you still have a good burger. You take a slider patty and it shrinks up, you just, you got a tiny patty. (laughs) That's just it. But still, I, I, we had bought a pack of slider buns. I was going to make chicken Parmesan sliders earlier this week and Like I said about, oh, that shrinks up. Well, I was counting on, I'd cut the like chicken pieces up and did a full chicken parm and everything, but I was counting on the pieces shrinking more when I cooked them and they didn't. And so I basically had like a dozen pieces of full size chicken parm. (laughs) And so it was like, but they were all like, these were meant to go on slider buns. These needed full-sized hamburger buns. We just had chicken Parmesan sandwiches, which was a great dinner, but they were supposed to be sliders. So I had two whole packages of slider buns that I needed to do something with. And I was like, okay, tonight was supposed to be fried chicken for dinner, but I need to use up these slider buns before they go bad. So we're having burgers and just made a shit ton of sliders. And damn, if they weren't awesome. So juicy. But again, I will say I should have trimmed the brisket because if you ever had a whole brisket, there's a a lot of fat in them. And I saw a video about it that they were like, hey, what they tried to, because you, the average hamburger, you're looking for like 80, 20, 80% meat, 20% fat. And they were like, yeah, if your, your average brisket apparently runs between 20 and 25% fat. And so if you're leaning, you're looking for that 20, you know, that 80, 20 standard hamburger, you want to cut the big, chunky there's like a big chunk of fat that's on the side of a brisket it's like yeah you want to take that off he said if you take that off you're pretty much an 80 20 like okay i should have done that because this is very fatty hamburger it was just it it rendered very well that fat just melted off and it made really juicy burgers i'm not gonna lie there's a they were so good the flavor was great they were really juicy burgers they were not dry but damn it if that flat top was not swimming those things were damn near frying by the end of it. <laughs> just so much grease. But they were good. I'm not going to, that was so fucking good. The friend, like, especially when the hamburger is going from in the grinder, you know, like I grind it up, it goes in the bowl. And within an hour of me grinding it up, it is getting cooked. That's how fresh these burgers were. Fucking great. And if you have the ability, if you have a stand mixer, Get the meat grinder attachment if, if you know if you're inclined to eat meat, whatever. If you if you have the ability to grind your own hamburger, I highly recommend it. Really, <laughs> I really do. It's just good meat. And in this case, I got thirteen. Okay, what do I have left? We used almost uh, two and a half pounds today. I think I've got about eleven pounds. Yeah. I've got 11 pounds of hamburger in my freezer that all in all cost me under 50 bucks. That's, that's a good way to go. And at this rate, all I have to do is like one brisket a month will basically cover all of our hamburger needs for a month. You know, we're making spaghetti and I'm making burgers and then we're making, I could take some and make some sausage with it, make a beef sausage. Uh, you know, there's some, we have, we use hamburger for a lot of things, you know, hamburger helper, make what, make chili, whatever. But I got all this, I got 13 or 11 pounds of hamburger left in my freezer. That's a month for one, you know, yeah, it took me about an hour all in all, you know, to chop it up, freeze it, grind it up, 
do the things to make hamburger. But you know what? It's fucking good. I can't complain. I really can't. Try it. If you have the ability, try it. Fresh ground hamburger. Oh, I know. I'm all over the place tonight. I'm, I'm <laughs> all the things that I planned were other segments, not the this part. But there's a, it's always the thing when I, I'm not here every week is there's a lot to cover. And I, I feel like I need to catch you up every time. It's like, hey, we, this is what I did in the garden. And hey, we had a birthday party. And hey, we've kind of gotten on a fucking Costco cake kick. <laughs> did I mention that? My, when, when I was home, we were just like craving sweets. And so we started just buying cakes. Because, you know, as my wife says, hey, just because he's like, you can just buy cake. It doesn't have to be your birthday. You can just have cake. Well, we've been buying the cakes from Costco and the white cake at Costco, at least by us, it's the white buttercream frosting on the outside, but it's a vanilla cheesecake filling in between the layers. So it's really good. And, you know, it's not, it, it's, we keep saying, no, this cake is too good for kids. <laughs> just, Mom, can we have cake too? No, this cake is too good for kids. Go have an ice cream cake. We've, we've shared the cake. Just, they just haven't had nearly as much cake as we have. But yeah, it's really good. And we've been, yeah, we've been having cake. And it's, yeah, <laughs> it's been really funny. But yeah, I just, I have to, I feel like I have to share all the things. And I've actually been collecting news stories, which is what I'm going to do right now because I've been rambling for too fucking long. So yeah, let's get to the fucking news. All right. I've only got two stories because being as it's been some time, my a lot of my stories got old and like, yeah, this story isn't as funny now. It's kind of lame. This other stuff was pretty good though. Keeping them simple this week. From not the bee.com, man found a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. No, I always do that. It was thousand dollars. $120,000 worth of cocaine in his tire after he got a flat. Yeah. Dude blows a tire on the side of the road. It, it detreaded. Have you ever see when the tires detread? Yeah. Tire detreads. He looks inside the, the, you know, picks up the shredded pieces of his tire and strapped inside were a bunch of bags of cocaine. Yeah. And he called the police to turn it in. Wow, dude. <laughs> Doing the right thing. But I, yeah, I, I'm with the, the people and with the, they were like, uh, can you imagine how skeptical the cops must have been when they showed up? Yes, exactly. Because somebody shows up and says, oh, I just found this cocaine in my tire, officer. Like, right. You just found the cocaine to be you know to be fair like he he called the cops himself and said holy shit cops i just found all this all these drugs in my tire when it detreaded damn <laughs> that is fucking crazy i mean you know what i can i can't even say shit because you know what and i i believe i've mentioned this before when he was younger my dad dabbled in the drug distribution uh, a business, you know, it was the seventies. <laughs> like, all the kids were selling drugs back in the days, whatever. But um, yeah, I remember he, he would say that that was shit that would go on when he worked at, you know, back when there were full service gas stations and garages that they'd be selling weed out of the back of the fucking, you know, like come up with someone come up for an oil change and a, you know, fucking dime bag or whatever the shit. And, you know, they just have, uh, you know, bags of drugs stashed in the spare tires in the back of the shop or whatever. Like, oops, you, you gave, you sold the wrong tire. You sold the wrong tire. Uh, but, <laughs> so I, I totally understand how this could happen theoretically, but still, damn, <laughs> you know, they had to take the car, you know, even though he called them that. They had to take him in for questioning because that's a lot of drugs to find. <laughs> Big fat air quotes, find in your car. 
I have, I have no idea where these drugs came from, officer. Technically, they're yours, dude. Possession's nine-tenths of the law. <laughs> your car, your tires, your drugs. <laughs> but damn, dude. Uh, speaking of drugs, CDC. Okay, not drugs, but damn. CDC, this, it's the closest I got to drugs for that transition. Coming from cbsnews.com. Of course, as always, links in the show notes at oddadoutpodcast.com. Got to plug, 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 plug. CDC team studying health impacts of the East Palestine train derailment got sick during the investigation. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know about the East Palestine, Ohio, and I've, I've learned it is pronounced Palestine, not East Palestine, but East Palestine, Ohio train derailment where trains full of toxic chemicals derailed and rather than try and clean up the shit, they blew up the fucking train and all of the chemicals and just caused a massive ecological disaster. Yeah. This massive, you know, ecological disaster that's apparently contaminated the air and the soil and the water for like apparently 25% of the country because the Ohio River Basin, where this all takes place, is the water source for a huge amount of states. Yeah. So the CDC were in there investigating people's symptoms, saying, hey, we're having. Uh, headaches and eye irritation and sore throats and congestion and bloody noses and rashes and coughs and it all it's like all these things that the people there that these are the symptoms that these guys were there to investigate and they're like going door to door and trying to you know figure out all this stuff from all the people there and while they are there doing their investigations they start having the symptoms <laughs> And apparently there are fire crew and cleanup crew that are there and they start having a lot of these symptoms. The C and if you raise any question about the bullshit that's going on there, the, C the people investigating the environment there and the problem are getting sick and are having the symptoms from the fucking shit that they're investigating. Yeah. To say the, the not just the government, but the train company was it Norfolk Southern royally fucked this up is the understatement of the millennium. There will never be a monumental fuck up the way they monumentally fucked this up. But yeah, this, the, the fact that the cleanup workers and the investigators that are there are getting sick should tell you that maybe the entire population of this area should not have been allowed to go home. It's not safe. There's no clean water. There's no clean air. The ground is toxic. Everybody should have remained evacuated from this area and they should put a big fucking hazmat bubble around this entire bitch. Yeah. Fucking bullshit. Ha. Ah, again, not just the government, not just everybody, all of the fuckers that were responsible for all this, but especially the, the train company, absolutely a hundred thousand percent, the train company, but also the EPA for saying shit was clear and everybody else for saying that people could go home because absolutely not. This is a fuck monumental fuck up of the millennium. Ah, I, I feel bad because people are sick. I feel bad for those CDC people who are just trying to do their job and they're getting sick. At the same time, you're the government. <laughs> I don't feel bad for the government getting sick. I realize you're a person, but right now you're the government. Fucking government. God damn it. All right. Now I was going to play the recommended listening jingle, but I just don't feel like it's fitting because I want to do something different with it. Because for the longest time, this segment has been me reviewing podcasts and things like that. But I'm listening to fewer and fewer new podcasts lately. Um, I've actually, uh, there's, there's some new ones that I've listened to. But I feel I've just kind of gotten like burned out, I guess. Like 
it's a lot of work doing the podcast reviews, um, mostly because of my insistence on putting in things like clips of the show and links and all the things that I do trying to uh, do that segment. But it also requires a steady flow of new podcasts to be reviewing. And instead, I kind of want to take a page from Bandrew Scott and the Bandrew Says podcast, where one of his segments is what he's been watching or listening. Like, oh, he's been, maybe he's been listening to these podcasts, or maybe he's been watching these movies. And he's like, if he went and binge watched a horror movie series from the 80s, or, oh, I just watched V for Vendetta, or I just... And I think I, I think that's where I want to go with this, because especially lately, I've been kind of on a retro TV kick. I've mentioned before when I went back and rewatched all of Star Trek Deep Space Nine on Netflix when it was still there. They took them all off. I think it's because the Paramount Plus and they have all of the Star Trek stuff now. But yeah, I so I, I've been, you know, I, I binged all of MASH except for the finale, which I still just. I think I just don't want to rewatch it. It's like, I need to, but I haven't rewatched the finale of MASH. But I started watching Dinosaurs on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I've been rewatching Andromeda, which was a Gene Roddenberry-based, the creator of Star Trek. It was basically, they made this other show based on some of his other concepts that weren't used in Star Trek. Um, I've been rewatching that. Actually, that's usually what I'm watching when I'm doing my plasma. I'll sit there and pull up an episode of Andromeda and hope I get through it by the time I'm done. Kind of that, kind of the race. I was like, am I going to finish this episode? Before? And it, the app I use, I use the Freebie app, which I believe is owned by Amazon. But I watch it on the Freebie app, which has commercials. And it's like, I'm just hoping it's like, am I going to finish my plasma before the episode's over or am I going to get through this? But what about also because they have the new reboot of Night Court with uh, uh, Melissa Rausch from Big Bang Theory. Well, I've been seeing all the clips of night of the new Night Court, and it, then I'd start seeing clips of the old Night Court on YouTube and TikTok and whatever, which made me like, you know what, is it on somewhere? And I looked it up, and Night Court, the original Night Court with with Harry Anderson and John Larroquette and, and the, 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 that whole, the original show fumbling over everybody's Richard Mall was bull. And I was like, and like, it, it was such a great show. And I, I remember I used to watch that show all the time when I was a kid, loved that show. And it was because of that show that I watched Dave's world, which if you were familiar with, Harry Anderson, after Night Court ended, went to do Dave's World, which was a sitcom based on the writings of uh, Dave Barry. And I think the, his article, his, his uh, column was called Dave's World. Um, but that's why I watched that show, which was a good show. I don't know where it is anyway. That's probably going to be on my list of retro shit to watch. But I've been watching Night Court and that's kind of been my trade right now is I'm like alternating between watching Andromeda and watching Night Court and throwing in an episode of Dinosaurs here and there with kids because it's a little more kid friendly. But one, I, you know, people think of Night Court as this being kind of a sitcom, procedural sitcom. You know, it's, it's, it's a comedy set in a courthouse and all this. There, there, there's jokes. But it's a lot more drama. It is really much more of a drama told through humor. There's comedy in it. Everybody's cracking jokes and, and, and all that. But it, very serious situations. Every episode is very serious. And it's, it's interesting looking at it now as an adult looking back on, I just remember this being a funny show as a kid to looking at it now and realizing, no, every episode was really serious. They tackled death. They tackled, you know, people's reputations. I mean, there's, there's one, there's more than one case where there's one prostitute who is a, a you could say she's a frequent flyer in the courtroom. She gets picked up all the time. It's constantly going through Judge Stone's court. 
And she's introduced as a character in the first episode. And she is a recurring character for the first three seasons. And her kind of her whole thing is she's kind of developed a crush on the judge because he treats her like a human. He treats her like a person. And she's like, nobody else treats me the way he does. He looks at me like a person, not just like a prostitute, not just, you know, some street trash, you know, and things like that. And there's a whole episode where he's being investigated for, they're trying to basically, you know, strip him of his, his position as a judge. And one of the things that comes up is, oh, he's associating with prostitutes. And they're like, oh, you were seen on this night with this person. And this prostitute was seen going into your apartment and this, all this, blah, 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 blah. And what it turns out was that her friend had just been murdered. And it was this, and she had nobody else to run to because she was so scared of it happening to her. And it was just this whole big wake up call for her of like, this is the life I live and I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to be the, the girl they pull out of the gutter next. You know, that was my friend. I've known her for years and now she's gone and I don't know what to do. And I don't want to be like that. It's like, this is supposed to be a comedy. This is always presented as a comedy, but these are the subjects that are hit. And, you know, there, there's a whole episode just dealing with Harry being afraid to go to the doctor because, you know, his dad went to the doctor for a completely routine procedure and died. And so he's been afraid to go to the doctor ever since he was a kid, but he could have died from the, from the problems he was having. You know, things like that. It's like, these are serious subjects. But this is supposed to be a comedy. But it's like, no, it really, you know, it's, it's like people who don't, who never watched MASH, who don't understand MASH. And don't understand that, yes, it was funny and there were jokes and it was a comedy. But it was the, the writing of it and the, the emotion and the, the real deep dramatic storytelling of it was the thing that made people watch. People didn't watch MASH because it was funny because comedy's comedy. Good jokes are good jokes and yeah, you watch it, but comedy can only go so far. You have to have a serious bit. You got to have some drama. Not to be dramatic, but you have to have some drama in there. And and the Night Court really did that. It really did get you in the, in the feels while also giving some genuine laughs. Like for the most part, there was like the B plot of every episode was some silly thing. You know, there's always some crazy, stressful, dramatic thing happening. And everybody's stressing about, and it's the big center, you know, the A story is the big drama. And then generally speaking, the B story is some ridiculously stupid thing like, oh, there's this guy in court who is, uh, he's there for robbing a bill, for robbing an apartment. And he thought he would get away with it because he is convinced that he is invisible. And, oh, they're waiting on, you know, the psychologist to come up and take him, you know, for, uh, in not investigation, for an evaluation. And, the whole time while well, everybody's like, we can see you. And, you know, they're just dragging, you know, this is the B plot. Oh, it's the guy who thinks he's invisible and everybody can see him. And he's like, why do you guys see me? Blah, blah, blah. And you get to the end of the episode. It's like, I figured it out. I know why you could see me. I was wearing clothes. And it's, if you know, Michael Richards, Kramer from Seinfeld is doing his character. And you get to the end of the episode and he is sitting there naked as all hell. On like spread eagle in the middle of the fucking courtroom, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, wow! And what was really funny watching that episode because the last shot of the episode is him sitting there naked as a jaybird in the middle of the fucking courtroom, like spread eagle, was that 
they censored his junk. There is a big blur in his genital region, which means they shot that. So he was sitting there naked and they shot it and they kept that in there rather than, hey, let's use a take where his dick's not on display. (laughs) But I was like, that's blurred. They shot that and they put his dick in the episode. I'm sure it was originally censored, but the fact that that's the take they went with, with, you know, Michael Richards all hanging about in the courtroom, like, you didn't do, like, oh, where he's hiding behind, like, he's, he's, he's obscured and nope, spread eagle Michael Richards, junk on display, we just had to blur it out, like, that, that just surprised the ever-living shit out of me, knowing this is, you know, a, a primetime sitcom. <laughs> But yeah, it's I've been having fun watching Night Court. And it's kind of, I, I mentioned before, I would watch MASH when I would take my naps. I'd like lay down, I'd start an episode, and I'd wake up three episodes later. And MASH was an hour long. This is a 30-minute show. <laughs> I go through a lot of episodes if I fall asleep. But yeah, it's been fun to watch back on the show, especially watching the show grow from the first couple seasons where a lot of the cast changed up in the first few seasons. So it's been, it's been cool rewatching it. That's what I've been doing. Um, haven't had a lot of movies. I want to see the new super Mario brothers movie. The early reviews just came out and everyone's saying really good things. I really hope it's good. I think I want to take the boys to a fucker movies expensive. Um, I, I've found Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch going on. We're still watching battle bonds. We're in the middle of watching this season. We haven't even gotten to the, championship season it's so crazy they they've really expanded this season of battle bots but yeah maybe i'll do more coverage on battle bots later um yeah i just i too much night court that I, I, I don't have room anymore in this segment for any more stuff but that's what i've been doing i've been catching up on my retro tv on the free v app um yeah again it's free it's i'm, I'm pretty sure if i remember it's owned by amazon and it's just kind of it's spiffy um, yeah, Andromeda and Night Court. Hopefully, I, I'll, I'll I'll catch up on more Andromeda as I get to. I'm in season three right now, and it's only got five seasons, so I'm like halfway, I'm most of the way through season three. So I'm a, about to the point where shit starts getting really weird. Apparently, and I'm gonna run out, but you know that's how shows are. But okay, that's enough of that. I don't know where to go with this because doing reviews i can just say and that's a great show i'm talking about whatever the fuck i'm watching so before i you know i I just don't know where i don't know how to end the segment right now so i gotta i gotta work on that (laughs) and i gotta take another drink of my water because well fuck water (sighs) gotta get that like gallon of water down a day at least doc said three liters and between my coffee and my water bottle i'm at least getting my three liters and it's been weird. I've cut sodas out for the most part. Not 100% completely, but like 99% completely. Uh, about the only time I've had a soda in the last month is if we were having burgers. Burger nights. I mean, just having a Dr. Pepper with my burgers. Burgers, especially when I'm doing sliders, um, is, is great. You know, can't beat a Dr. Pepper with a burger. But I otherwise, I'm, I'm keeping them to a minimum. So, yeah, I've got other stuff to talk about, which should, you know, be good for next week. And we'll see how that goes. And I'll be able to give you more of an update on some other stuff that we've got going on. But in the meantime, thank you for listening to the Undata podcast. You can find the show and all the back episodes and subscribe at oddadoutpodcast.com. Of course, you can find me. I'm at oddadout on all the social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, technically. And that you can, if you want to reach out to me, you could tag me in all those places or hit me up on the Odd Dad Out voicemail line. That is at 516-636-7631. I hope I remember that right. It's in the show notes. That's 516 Odopod 1 or 
show at odddadoutpodcast.com. I know I'm throwing a bunch of stuff at you, but it's all in the show notes. Just remember that. Click in your app, it's in the show notes, go to odddadoutpodcast.com. It's all there where you can subscribe, you can donate to the show, you can buy merch, you can do all the stuff, you can leave a comment on a post, whatever you want to do. <sighs> so much stuff. So much I'm telling you. So much stuff for you to just click in the show notes and remember or go to odddadoutpodcast.com. I'm just going to keep saying it. That's it. <laughs> but until next time, my oddballs, I am Adam Higgins, the odd dad out. Thank you and good night.